many of you got this right? So it says, evaluate the following, round to the nearest hundreds, which means tens, hundreds. That's two decimal places. So we're rounding to two decimal places here. So, um, does anyone remember how to type it in? I bet Mrs. Watcott's kids know. How would you rewrite this? Yeah. Or, I mean, if you use a big number of this small Okay, that's called the change of base formula. So you got to first rewrite it good as log of the big thing, big in size, not number. Log of 7 divided by log of 6. And then now, yes, because of that, the change of base formula, because of that, we can type it into our calculator. So you did log of 7, close your parentheses, divided by log of 6. Guys, you have to know how to do this. So 1.09 would have been the correct answer. Um, you have to be able to do this, you guys. This exact problem was on the end of level test. It's super easy, but you have to know what you're doing. So please, 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 please don't forget how to do it. Is everybody good? Did most of you get it right? Raise your hand if you got it right. Oh, good. Okay, moving on. All right, let's get going. So hopefully we can have no homework. So today we're doing 5-6. We're going to be doing, we're going to be um, solving systems of inequalities. So, once again, 5-6, systems of inequalities. So recall that we learned yesterday how to solve systems of equations. So, solving systems of equations is what we learned yesterday. So this is what we learned yesterday. If we were given a system of equations such as x minus y is equal to 1 and 2x plus 3y is equal to 21. So you know that we could solve this by rewriting them in graphing form such as the top would become y equals x minus 1, the bottom we solve for y and put it in graphing form, we get negative 2 thirds x plus 7. We could graph them and find the intersection point, right? So that would be the x comma y that makes the statement true. So this was systems of equations. Today we're doing systems of inequalities. So remember, this is an equation because there's an equal sign. If it's an, an inequality, instead of an equal sign, it's just a fancy equal sign. It's an inequality. So, once again, does everybody see how similar they are? This is systems of equations. This is systems of inequalities. Does everybody see how they look almost the exact same? So, guess what? We almost go about solving them the exact same, except for a couple things. This is going to have one solution. It's going to be the xy point where they intersect. Because this is an inequality, it's going to give you a range of values. So, it can be between this and this. So it's going to give you a number of different values you can have to make this equation or this inequality true. So this is going to have um, a number of solutions. So a number of solutions. And usually the best way of writing out these solutions is to show it by graphing. And that's what we're going to be doing all day. So you can show the answers by graphing. So we're going to go ahead and just start practicing this. So everybody... Problem number two. Here we go. So on the worksheet, problem number two. So the first thing we do, treat it like an equal sign for right now. Just simply, well, I mean, you have to pay attention to a couple things because remember, if we divide by a negative, we have to flip the inequality, right? So a couple of things to remember. So first of all, we do need to write each of these in graphing form. So I'm going to focus on this top. I'm going to come down here, and I'm going to write it in graphing form. So once again, these are linear, so it's y equals mx plus b form. So first of all, I'm getting y alone, so I'm going to subtract x from both sides. I'm going to put it in graphing form, so I have right now negative y is greater than or equal to negative x plus 1. Questions up to here so far? Okay, negative y is technically negative 1 times y. We need y completely alone, so I'm going to divide both sides of the equation by negative 1. Because we divided by a negative, we've got to flip our inequality. So we have y is less than, so we've got to flip our inequality or equal to, then let's split this up. Negative x divided by negative 1 is positive x, and positive 1 divided by negative 1 is negative 1. So I just rewrote this as y is less than or equal to x minus 1. Questions? Okay, I'm going to give myself some room. So I'm going to now write this one in graphing form. So we have 2x plus 3y is less than or equal to 21. So I'm going to subtract 2x from both sides. So we have 3y is less than or equal to negative 2x 
plus 21. And I will divide both sides by 3. So we have y is less than or equal to, I don't need to flip any inequalities here, we divide it by a positive. So split this up and write it all pretty like for your own personal comfort here. Negative 2x divided by 3 is the same thing as negative 2 thirds x. And then positive 21 divided by positive 3 is positive 7. So we now have this inequality. y is less than or equal to negative 2 thirds x plus 7. I just like to have them all pretty and written out by each other. Okay, so now from here, we're going to go ahead and graph those lines. Now a couple things to note. If it's greater than or equal to, it means it includes it, right? It means it includes it. So it'll include the values that land on the line. If it's just greater than or less than, that means it does not include the values that land on that line. So you've got to do a dotted line. So, but these are both solid lines because it's going to include. So we're just going to graph these. I'm going to keep it color coordinated just for you guys. So we're going to graph this. We have our y-intercept at negative 1. It's a line with a slope of 1, up 1 over 1, up 1 over 1, up 1 over 1, and all the way across here. So then from there, because it is less than or equal to, I'm going to draw in a solid line. Because it includes the values that fall on the line. Questions on that so far? Now, many teachers teach their students to shade right now, but I'm going to urge you to wait because it's going to be harder. So they would shade it and then do this one and shade it and then see where the shades overlap. But I'm going to urge you to not just to try to think advancedly and then you only have to shade a piece of it, the correct piece. So I'm not going to shade it yet. Is everybody okay with that? Okay, so I'm going to just grab this purple line now. So we have a y-intercept at positive 7, our slope's down 2 over 3, so down 1, 2 over 1, 2, 3. Remember we always go to the right for the rise over run, so down 1, 2 over 1, 2, 3, down 1, 2 over 1, 2, 3, and then up this way, up 1, 2 over 1, 2, 3. So now I'm going to draw in, and because it includes it, it's also a solid line. I'm going to try to draw this, it's hard to draw on such a big thing. So is everybody comfortable so far? Now, let's think of which piece we need to shade. So you, it does take a little bit of advanced thinking for a second, because you kind of have to sort it out in your brain. So let's kind of think of it in pieces. It says, the y values that are less than or equal to x minus 1. So this is my line for x minus 1, right? So aren't the y values less than that all of these? Yeah? Aren't these all the y values that are less than that line? Below it. Does everybody see that? All of this. Okay. So we can shade all of that. But that might not be in our final answer. So that's why I want you to urge, to urge you to think about it. So we know it's in this section can be shaded. But also at the same time it has to be y values less than negative 2 thirds x plus 7. So it has to be at the same time the y values also have to be less than this purple line. So if we were to shade in the whole purple line, that would be all of this, right? But where do both of those happen? Isn't that, isn't these the le values less than the red line? And at the same time, aren't these the values less than the purple line? So I'm only shading in this region here. Wait, on number two, do you want to scratch it? Yeah, so this is finding solutions. All of this shaded is the solution. It could be any of these x, y values. So there's a lot of solutions, right? So you show it by graphing. Does that make sense, everybody? Um, yeah, so actually, I do have some graph paper. I should have passed that out. So I'm going to do another one. So once again, be really careful when you're shading, especially if you're sitting there thinking about it. So once again, it was the y values less than x minus 1, which included all of these. But at the same time, it has to be the y values less than this line. So it was only these. Okay, let's do another one. Number three. Here we go. So once again, let's get it in graphing form. So focusing on the top one in graphing form, right? If you look at number three, the top one's in graphing form. 
If you look at the bottom one, it's in graphing form. So we're lucky. We just get to graph these. So here we go. Graphing this top one, I'm going to do in red. So our slope is negative 2, our y-intercept's at 4. So I go up to 4, put a point, then I have a slope of negative 2. So I go down 1, 2 over 1, down 1, 2 over 1, down 1, 2 over 1, and so on. Now, is it a solid line? Does it include that line? No, it's just y values less than that line, not including the values that fall on the line. So you have to draw in a dotted line here. So I draw in a dotted line, which means it, it does not include the line. Questions? I'm going to draw my other line in green. So it's y values less than or equal to x plus 2. So I'm drawing my line. I go up to 2. My slope is 1. Up 1 over 1. All the way here. Now for that line, it does include it. So it's going to be a solid line for this one. So solid line here. Okay, questions up to here. Now we're going to go ahead and shade the correct region on our graph here. So we want the y values, the y values have to be less than this line, this negative 2x plus 4, which was my red line. So the y values less than that would be below the line, guys, below the line. So that would be all of this right here, right? All of this. But at the same time, it has to be also y values less than or equal to, so less than x plus 2. So it also has to be below the line, the green line. Is everybody good with that? So it has to be below the red line and below the green line at the exact same time. So we're only shading in this region. That's where this works. So now understand something. What you're showing here is the solution. Every single x, y value that falls in this section is an answer for this inequality. Any solution you pick will work in x comma y for both equations. Questions on how to do this? Okay, so just be really careful when you're thinking about shading. That tends to be the hardest part. Do we need to do another one or are you feeling confident? Another one. Okay, let's do one more off the worksheet. Number six. So once again, get it in graphing form. On number six, my top one is already in graphing form, except I'm actually going to rewrite it a little bit prettier because a lot of students get thrown off with this negative x over three. Well, don't want to throw you off. What that really is is, so we have y is less than, that's the same thing as negative one-third x plus three. Because x divided by 3 is the same thing as multiplying by 1 over 3. So we have negative 1 third x plus 3. So I'm going to graph that. So I go up 3. Then I go down 1 over 1, 2, 3. Down 1 over 1, 2, 3. Down 1 over 1, 2, 3. Up 1 over 1, 2, 3. And it is less than not including the line. So I do a dotted line here. which says it's not including. All right, so now I'm going to do a green line, and I'm going to get it in graphing form. So I'm going to subtract 2x from both sides. So I have y is greater than or equal to negative 2x plus 4. So it's in graphing form, so I'm going to go ahead and graph it at 4. It's a slope of down 2 over 1, so down 1, 2 over 1. One, two, three. Okay. And it is greater than or equal to, so it does include this line, so it's a solid line. And now we're going to shade the appropriate region. So thinking about this carefully, it has to be below, so it's y value is less than the red line. So it's got to be below the red line, 
These are the y values less than the red line. And at the same time, greater than the green line. So above the green line. So it has to be below the red line and above the green line. So that would be this region. And once again, any xy value in there will be true, will make this systems of inequalities work. It will be a solution. Okay. Precision is the key with this. Questions? Okay. So this is what I want you to do. 8 through 13. So we're not doing every problem because we don't need to beat a dead horse. If you know how to do it, let's move on. So I only want you to do 8 through 13. Not a whole lot of problems. So we don't have to do... Because we have kind of a lot to cover since that took us so long. So number 7, guys, we're just putting this into um, a system of inequalities. And then we can just solve by graphing. So it says... I'm going to do number seven with you. It says, the dry cleaner charges $4 to clean a pair of pants. A lot of coughing going on. The dry cleaner charges $4 to clean a pair of pants and $3 to clean a shirt. You want to get at least eight items clean. You have to spend $32 on dry cleaning. So we're going to write a system of inequalities to model the situation. So what I said was, first of all, I said, okay, I'm going to call, I'm going to call X pants. X pants. So I'm going to call my variable x pants, and I'm going to call my variable y shirts. Nope, yeah, shirts. So I started off like this. This is kind of how I thought through it. I said, okay, so we don't know how many pants, right? So x plus y, we don't know how many shirts. But we know we have x plus y amount of clothing, right? We have some shirts plus some pants. It says that we want to get at least eight items clean. So, at least eight items. So, we want it to be above, greater than, or equal to eight items total, right? Yep. So, I set up my first part up like this. Then I said, okay, we also know the dry cleaner charges $4 to clean a pair of pants. So, it's going to cost us $4 times X times however many pants is. Pants is pants. And then plus... It's going to cost us $3 times the number of shirts. And we only have $32 to spend. So it needs to cost us, well, that amount needs to add, the add up to be less than or equal to $32. Does that make sense of how I set it up? Yes. Okay, so now you can solve by graphing. I'm going to allow you to do that, but we're going to, so I'll give you two minutes to do that. Go, craft it, solve by graphing. So everybody listen, Scott had an aha moment. If you graphed it and got this, this is correct. So that means that in this region, if you do that, it's going to work. So let's look here. Now Scott said, oh, so nine, if I have nine, what did you say? Do you remember, Scott? He said nine comma. It was like four shirts. It was four shirts and five pants. It was nine items. Okay, over four of one. Yeah, that looks great. So Scott said, okay, so four shirts and five pants works for this. And that's true. Does it fall in the region? Yep. Yeah, so that's one of the many solutions we could go. So you could figure out, okay, so I can take four shirts and five pants. Does that make sense, everybody? Yeah. yeah. What? Oh, yeah, yeah. So, sorry. Sorry, I'm just going to... But that is greater than eight, right? Greater than or equal to eight. So that's the that's the thing. Okay. All right. So now, guys, let's go on. So doing number nineteen. So we don't always have to do these systems of inequalities. Are not always going to be lying. So now we're going to extend our knowledge. So we're going to do nineteen. So it, it works the same way though. So first of all, I always get anything. So this could be quadratics, you guys. This could be, right now we're going to do absolute values. It's not always going to be lines. But we know how to graph all of them. So it's the same idea. So I'm going to graph this. Well, it's already in graphing form, right? Everybody? Yeah. That's a line, right? Yeah. So let's graph it. So I go down three. There's my y-intercept. Up one over one, and so on. So I'm going to graph this line. 
And it is less than not including, so it's a dotted line. <laughs> then, at the same time, we're graphing this. It's already in graphing form. It's an absolute value function in graphing form. So we know how to graph that. So we go, okay, there's no shift left and right, right? Nope. No, there is a shift left and right, That's right? right? We always go right forward, but it's added on the inside of our absolute value of x. So we're going right forward, and then our slope is up one over one. So up one over one, up one over one. Up one over one, up one over one, up one over one. On both sides. This is an absolute value function. So now it's greater than or equal to, so it does include it, so it's a solid line on my absolute value function here. So now we're going to shade their region. That works for both of these. So it's got to be less than the line. So we have less than the red line. So below the red line and above, greater than or equal to, above the absolute value function. So isn't that just this piece being and we're done? So do you see how you can extend this to quadratics? What if it was a quadratic? Wouldn't you just do the same thing? What if you're graphing a quadratic and a line? What if you're graphing a quadratic and absolute value? Do you see how to do this amongst all functions? Yes. Yeah. Okay, do I need to do another one? No, no, we're good. Okay, so these are what's required of you and do tomorrow. Only the problems, 8 through 13, 7 and 17, and also 19 through 25. 19 through 25. So, ready, set, go. 